Welcome everyone to another edition of Expat Hoops, the podcast where we interview pro basketball players to talk about their experiences playing overseas on and off the court. This is episode 92, and today we welcome Roydell Brown to the pod. Yeah, Tony, Roydell's story is interesting. He's the son of a coach. He's a Louisiana native. He actually started his college career at Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, uh, but transferred out after his freshman year. He spent a season at Southwest Mississippi Community College and then spent the last two seasons uh, at McNeese State, where he finished out his college career uh, off the pod. We had quite a bit to say about how proud he is of this year's team and all the success that they've had to date. Uh, his pro career, though, started out in 2020 in in the kind of the the weird phase of COVID, uh, where unfortunately he had his college career ended a little bit short by COVID. But then the fall of 2020, he began in Slovakia. Uh, he then joined KTP Basket in Finland for the 21-22 season. Has basically played there ever since. I say basically because this past summer, the summer of 2023, he played in Colombia for about a month before rejoining KTP Basket this season. When I sat down with him, he joined us from the home of KTP Basket, Kotka, Finland. Everyone's COVID story is a little bit different, and some have had their pro careers cut off, some have had their college careers cut off, but it's fortunate that everyone who has had to experience COVID as a basketball player has been able to rebound for the most part. And speaking of the Finnish league, uh, we'd like to take a moment not to thank not only Roy Dell for sitting down with us to tell his story, but the folks in Finland's top league, the Kroy Ish Liga, and his team, for their support for behind the scenes to help make this interview possible. They're the ones that were able to set us up with him and uh, be supportive in being able to tell his story and the story of their league. Whether you've seen Roydell stateside or overseas, we'd like to hear from you in the comments where you saw him play. And we'd also like to interact with our viewers in the comments. So if you have something to say, we'd love to hear from you. Please let us know in the comments. Absolutely. And we also want to encourage you to follow us and keep the conversation going on Instagram. Follow us at Expat Hoops so you see the bonus content we bring you, updates on past guests, and you know who's next on the pod. And now we're happy to bring you our conversation with Roydell Brown about his experiences overseas. Hope you all enjoy, everyone. We're going to jump back a little bit. You uh, started at McNeese State, uh, you know, school that's having really good uh, results this season as we talked a little bit off the pod, uh, but you had a really good college career. And we always like to ask the point, you know, what point did this start to become tangible to you that you could play this game professionally, you know, whether it's domestically or overseas? And what did that look like for you? Uh, so honestly, I've been playing basketball since the age of three. So baseball, you know, pretty much baseball, uh, basketball, I've been around my life pretty much forever. So I would say probably that's like me just playing basketball over the years, continue to get better. I say probably around like seventh grade, eighth grade. You know, I used to go around telling people, like, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to play professional. And, like, you know, people didn't really, like, believe me at that time. They was just like, you know, or, like, they say, like, I just tell two teachers, be like, you know, what you want to be when you grow up? I just, you know, a professional basketball player. And they'll just be like, you know, be realistic. And I'm like, you know, that's like a realistic goal of mine that I feel like, you know, I'm able to accomplish, especially, like, we're playing basketball my whole life. So I'll say around seven, eighth grade, I pretty much had an identity that, you know, I was real good to where I know I could play professionally at some type of level, whether, you know, always the main goal was always to get to the NBA, but I also knew, like, there were other ways and other steps to take to get to my main goal. So it's interesting you say you knew there were other steps to take to get to your main goal. Uh, when was it that you kind of learned that, you know, you could do this outside of the NBA, whether it's, you know, I, I guess at that point in time, it's probably D or G League, uh, depending on where you're talking about as a, as a kid, but also when did the overseas game become an idea that, like, that's something that you could do? Oh, uh, I would say probably – towards probably my senior year of high school. I feel like, you know, I had the, the tangibles to be able to get there. And then I feel like, you know, just being able to pick the right college to help me get to where my main goal was. And I'll say probably once, because I started I started off at the University of Lafayette my freshman year, and then I transferred to Southwest Mississippi, which is a junior college. And then my last two years, I finished out at McNeese. And I'll say probably around my junior year, I feel like, you know, I was able to, like, that was the year that I told myself, like, yeah, like, you you were able to get to play professional uh, overseas. You just got to continue to get better and continue to strive. So uh, as you did continue to get better, um, what did it look like, you know, also because you're you're in a unique spot where um, on your career timeline, 
your college career timeline, COVID breaks out, as we talked about off the pod, like, you know, you're you're getting to the, the conference tournament and COVID breaks out. Um, so it's also a really weird time uh, in terms of just to try to start a new chapter in your life, especially when nobody knows what it's going to look like. So what did that look like for you in terms of like agents, you know, contacting you or trying to, to actually get to that next step? Because even though you thought to yourself, all right, I think I can do this in a world that looks a little bit different. How did that actually look like for you? Uh, I would say probably like, you know, agents, they started reaching out to me towards like, I'll say probably around March to when conference, you know, started, the conference started, started. So like agents started hitting me up and then that's when COVID had started. And so like, I, I pretty much knew like, you know, everything started shutting down, but I still continue to, I still was able to get into our gym. I still was able to work out. So like, even though places were shut down and stuff like that. Agents were still telling me, like, you know, we're interested in you, but, you know, continue to work out because it's a possibility that leagues might start up at a later time in the um, later months. I say some league might start in November, some league might start in January. So just being able to continue to work out and stay ready for when that opportunity do come with with whichever uh, agent I did decide to sign with. It just means to continue to be able to work on my game and don't just, you know, be like, oh, man. COVID started basically ruining everything to where like, nah, like just continue to work and continue, you know, to want to get better. And so you started receiving contact from agents. Uh, and what did that process look like to you? Because obviously, you know, you're, you're used to playing basketball. You're not used to like navigating, like, where am I going to go? Negotiating contracts, things like that. So what did that process actually look like for you as basically trying to get us on the road to Slovakia, where you start your career? Uh, I would say I, when I was looking for agent, I tried to do it to how, you know, guys do when they try to see what college they want to go to. So basically, like, I did, like, my background research, you know, find out which clients they had. I asked their clients around, like, you know, what type of person is, um, what type of person they are, stuff like that. So I just basically, like, just went out, put, like, a whole list together of things I wanted to know and learn about who the agent was and, you know, find out, what, like, is he's willing to really work for me or is, you know, he's not. And that's pretty much how I went on about it. And then I was able to, uh, you know, a couple of guys reached out and then you know, I reached out to uh, a couple of guys myself. And I just was able to find, like, you know, the right age at that time. I felt like I could trust and to help me, like, you know, start my career. And so, you know, that's how I ended up into Slovakia. And so 2021, uh, the 20, 2021 season is where you wind up playing in Slovakia for BKM Lushnik, which uh, we went off over the pronunciation of that off the pod. Uh, but you spent some time there in Slovakia. That's that's your you know first stop on your uh, career overseas. Take us through what that experience was like, both on and off the court. Uh, I say on the court. I, honestly, people, uh, a lot of people ask me all the time, like what kind of league it is. I say honestly, for rookies, that's a good league to go to, to just to be able to you know learn learn the style of overseas basketball, how it works, you know, learn about professionalism and stuff like that. Uh, I say pretty much off the court. It was I had to get accustomed because that was like the first time I really was away from home for like a long period of time. So I had to get accustomed to like not seeing my family, missing holidays, missing just you know not seeing my mom, and my dad. I was just used to seeing them and just you know your family. Like me playing in college, my family was at all my games. Like every home game, my family was there. So I just had to get accustomed to like you know my family not gonna be at my games no more and just stuff like that. So it really was. It kind of was hard at first. It probably like took me about a month or two to get accustomed to how how it was. But once I was able to get accustomed to this real life, like this is my job now, like this is what I have to do. It pretty much got easier over time. And were there any things that you found useful in terms of dealing with that? Like, you know, it's one thing that is fairly common for it to be your first time uh, either overseas or away from your family for a significant period of time. You know, some people might have had the benefit of going overseas, but maybe they went with their family for a short period of time. So uh, can you talk about that a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, exactly what that looked like for you in terms of Slovakia, what you kind of struggled with, not only being away from your family, but were there any other kind of like culture shock moments that you had as well? Uh, culture shock, I'd say probably it was the food, for sure, especially like coming off from New Orleans. So we're pretty like big on our food culture. So I'll just say food language barrier. It was kind of hard at first, you know, being able to, you know, talk to guys and talk to teammates and just day-to-day -day life, things I needed. But uh, I say after a while, like, I, you know, I just try to start learning the language and just 
start trying to, you know, meet meet guys. And after a while, like it pretty much got easier to me. Especially like, you know, I had like guys like close friends back home that will help me out through the process also. Like, you know, just just tell me like to keep going and don't give up. You know, don't take it for granted. Cause like I said, I was an opportunity that, you know, a lot of guys wish to be in. And this I was able to, you know, realize like, yeah, like I can't take it for granted because at the end of the day, like I could be home just like anybody else is home right now that plays professional basketball. So just continue to notice, don't take it for granted. I want to want to be there and want to help, you know, do something. So this opportunity leads you to Finland and where you've, you've been there the last like three. So this is now your third season in Finland. Uh, same club, uh, which is kind of unique. And we'll, we'll get to the part where, you know, you spent the summer in Columbia this past summer, but more or less, you know, you've got this big block of time uh, where you're in uh, Finland for Katko, Finland, uh, KTP basket. Take us through what it was like, at least initially getting there in terms of how that all came together and what things were like in your first season there. Uh, so at the agent I had at the time, you know, uh, so after I finished my first year in Slovakia, I just, you know, sat down with him and, you know, seen what I had, the stats I had, the awards I had won, and things like that. Then we just tried to find places for me to go into my second year to have a step up from Slovakia to a different league. And we just ended up finding filming. And I, I heard, I looked around and heard that, you know, filming is a pretty good league for players to go to and be able to expand their career. So that's pretty much how I got here my first year, just, you know, sitting down with my agent and just looking into it. My first year here was, you know, pretty good. You know, I was pretty much one of the younger guys at the time. At that time, we had, like, a real, like, vet team. Like, we had – I probably was the only American that was in, like, in our, in the 20s. All the other Americans was probably, like, 31, 33, 35. But there was vets that put in time, like, you know, that put in real time in their career to get to where they were. And, they, and like, they was able to help me out a lot, like, things I struggled with, things I need to improve. Like, they was able to help me on the court and also off the court. So I just felt like that was a good help into helping me, like, you know, being able to improve with my career. And then the stuff that they ended up teaching me, I tried to, you know, install into, like, other guys that were coming to the team my second year and my third year. So that's pretty much how it was my first year. And I feel like, you know, we made some playoffs. We lost the semifinals of the cup. So. So. One of the interesting things is because, you know, we we talked about this a little bit off the pod and uh, some of our listeners also know that it's not uncommon for people to, you know, go country to country. And so it's actually a little unusual, not not completely unusual, but a little unusual to stay in one spot for so long and with one team. So you're actually kind of an expert or, well, to some degree, you're kind of an expert uh, on Kuka, uh, Finland. What's it like there now that you've basically in your third year? Like what's, you know, common to you now, but that, you, you know, you had to get used to there. And uh, what are some of the things that you like about the stop that you're on? Uh, I would say like, you know, they seem like a family. It's, it's very family, like family-wise. Like I'm very known in, in, this, um, in the city. You know, I go to the store, fans me all the time. or we'll just going anywhere, really like fans that come up to me, fans that text, you know, want to take pictures, want to take autograph, autographs. So it's just like it's I've got a custom app. It's it's easy for me to be able to maneuver in you know in the city or area that I'm from, especially in Finland, like country wise to where I I kind of know my way around, and also like you know just being able to pick up on the different type of language. Like I've some some of the words you know I've learned how to what they mean and how to pronounce them, and being able to use them like even with my teammates or just this willing to know want to learn, especially you know I've been here three years so. At one point, like, pretty much my second year here, I just pretty much was like, you know, I might as well just learn the language somewhat because you never know, like, who knows? I, I didn't even know I was going to come back third year at that time. So it is, it is, you know, just me being able to come back and be pick, um, being able to pick up all things. It's pretty much made my transition easy. So here's a question for you. How much traveling do you actually get to do while you're actually, you know, in season – uh, and, you know, is that something that, especially that you, now since you've been there a few years that, you know, what are some of the places that you've liked to have visited, uh, within Finland? Uh, I mean, I've traveled to like pretty much places close by to like Kobola, Helsinki. I'll, I'll pretty much say Helsinki is probably like the best place I've been to in Finland because, you know, that's the capital. It's pretty much where everything's at. So I'll say like this throughout the year traveling in season, you know, probably 
if I could probably like once a month. On like if we have a weekend off, I probably end up traveling out there. Or like me and my wife, we'll travel to Helsinki or whatever, just to you know get out and just being able to go explore. Any favorite places to go? Uh, uh, it's one restaurant every time I go to Helsinki. It's called Kot Kot that I go to. It's like a, it's like a pretty much like a fast food restaurant place, but it's real good. That's probably like the favorite place I go to. Hmm. Like every time I go to Helsinki, I make sure that's one of my stops. <laughs> so it's a given. <laughs> yeah, it's a given. Like it's it's a real good place. Interesting. Uh, so we also, we were talking a little bit off the pod. So one of the things that kind of doesn't pop up as much on, on your background is the fact that, you know, as we alluded to, uh, that you spent some time in Columbia this past summer. Um, take us through exactly what that experience was like, how that kind of came to be. And at that point in time, you weren't actually expecting to go back to Finland, but uh, take us through what led you to Columbia. Uh, so pretty much, like I said, season was winding down out here. We ended up losing uh in the playoffs in the first round, and my agent was like, you know, what I'll be willing to take this opportunity to go play in Columbia for about a month. And at that time, I still was in shape, and I still was in playing shape and everything, so I was just like, you know, I might as well go ahead and continue to play for another month, month and a half, and that's how I ended up going to Columbia. You know, it, it was a very good, you know, very good, different opportunity that I went to take, you know, with the, uh, with the language. I kind of struggled a little bit, like with Spanish, but I mean, you know, I was able to pick up on different things and learn, learn like a different culture, especially with being in Finland three years. It was it gave me like a different opportunity to learn something different and being able, you know, to be able to induce it into my uh, in my career. And what was play like in in the Colombian league? Uh, obviously, you're only there for about a month, but in terms of uh, what was it like uh, in regards to what you've seen basically in in Europe? Oh, I say probably Europe. Europe wise, the the league is kind of like wait, what's better? Like it was don't get me wrong, like the coming league is it's a good league, decent league, but it's just like it's different wise. Like as in Europe, like if you're playing against guys, it's like six, ten, six, eleven, seven foot. But in the in the league of Columbia, the taller guy you might judge is probably six, seven, six, eight. But you know, it's it's a very good league, athletic league, you know, there's a lot of shooting, a lot of shooting in that league, you know. Man, you gotta be very athletic because guys, you know, it's not really kind of big guys, so it's pretty much a lot of running. So I'll say that's probably like the only difference, but I'll say probably the Europe, like decent Europe, uh, better for sure. So this is actually also an interesting thing too. We talked about off the pod, and you know, uh, the fact that you know people change agents and overseas is not not uncommon. Uh, but this is about the time you know the Columbia into coming into Finland this last year. Uh, that you did change agents, and uh, what was kind of the rationale for that? Was it basically to make you know exposure to to other markets, or what was the decision process for you? Oh, it kind of was just exposure to other markets. You know, I just feel like you know I pretty much ran my course at that time with that agent. I just feel like you know, I just wanted to get something new going in my career, especially like because like I said, I didn't come to Finland until around October, so I didn't really have I have a job. I sort of. With the season, you know, season guys season usually start around like the end of August, September. So I pretty much was at home just working out and things like that. So I just pretty much just felt like, you know, it was time to take a different route. So I just ended up, you know, looking and seeing and, and trying to find like a different agent, which I ended up finding. And then after that, you know, I just pretty much just let him try to, you know, put me in a, a possibility to play. And then this, like I said, this possibility ended up coming up to where, you know, KTB had reached out and was like, you know, was I still available and would I be interested in coming back a third year? And then I was like, you know, it pretty much was easy for me to, to decide because I've pretty much been in that league and, you know, of course, league for the past few years, in fact, for the past two years. And I pretty much knew how it works. I pretty much knew, like, the teams, the, you know, how to play, how our coach was, how practice would be. So it pretty much was easy for me to get accustomed to everything once I first got here. And that's also kind of interesting, too, because it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it sounds like that even though you had an agent, that this was something that came through the the team almost kind of directly contacting you and that the agent was kind of uh, essentially, you know, there in the background to kind of help, you know, sign off on it. Uh, I'll say kind of, kind of like that, yeah. Because, like I said, just 
we we right my agent, he pretty much was working like you know, trying to find opportunities for me from somewhere else. And then this opportunity just ended up coming up. And like I said, they ended up reaching out. And then I ended up putting them in contact with my uh the agent I'm currently signed to. And that's pretty much how everything just got put together and got it to um, got it to works. Roydell Brown, thank you for being a guest today on our pod and talking to us about your career overseas. Reminder to follow us on Instagram at Expat Hoops and on YouTube for all of our latest content. Roydell, we've got a couple of Expat Extras to talk to you about, which will go up on our YouTube. Care to stick around? Oh, yes, sir. Hello, and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like, and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.